integers today. So we, um, this one is going to take a look at, and actually I find this just like fractions, I find this much easier. Our adding and subtracting fractions and rational numbers was much more challenging because you had to create a common denominator. With multiplication and division, it was much easier because all you had to do was work your way across or multiply by the reciprocal. It was just, it wasn't the create the common denominator before you could do anything, create like terms. Multiplication doesn't need that idea. What it does need is to think about the multiplication rules. So there are two rules that kind of come with it, and I'm going to talk to you about talk to you about them a couple of ways. Um, so the rule comes down to how many negative numbers. So if you want to think about this for a second, it has actually has a lot to do with the same signs add, different signs negative. Because we looked at our addition rules, was same add, different subtract, right? So these are really similar. So when we work with this, so now instead of talking about same signs add, different signs subtract, we're going to see what the outcome is. We're going to see the two signs affect the product. So if I have, and I'll show you examples as I make sense of this, but if I have the same signs, okay, either positive and positive, positive times a positive number, or a negative times a negative number, I'm going to get a positive answer, okay? It kind of sounds like same signs add. If I have different signs, so either I multiply by a negative times a positive, or I use my commutative property and switch them around, I'm going to get a negative answer. That's the rule. That's the pattern. Another way to think of it, just to give you another whole thought process, is I count the number of lines. So instead of saying same signs at multiple, I get same signs, I get it um, a, a positive number. I'm going to say, OK, if I have an even number of lines, so I count one. I'm actually doing a different color real quick. One, two times one, two. That's four signs. Hey, that's going to be a positive number. Even numbers give me positive. Even number of lines. Negative, that's one line. That's two lines. That's, again, another positive number. If I come down here, so it's even number, and this kind of applies as you have large, more at, more multiply uh, factors to work with. The more factors you have, you might have like seven or eight numbers you have to multiply together, and if they're all positive, the answer stays positive, just like you've been using since the beginning of your multiplication in say fourth or fourth grade. Um, even number of lines. It's a little more thinking concept, but it gives you the idea, and if you have an odd number of lines, you're going to have a negative. So again, one, two, three, that's three lines. That's a negative number. Or same here. The other way I think of it, and this is just my, my way of thinking, um, there's always one left out. Um, if you ever heard the term odd man out, math wants to make it positive. We want to have our numbers to come together as a positive number. So. When we have that one left out, that's where we get our negative. And that's where we have these two odd numbers. We have two positives, or a positive, and then one left over. A positive and one left over. It also applies if I have a negative, a negative, and a negative. These two come together to make a positive, and that's going to be my answer. It's going to be negative again. So this is where the odd and evens kind of comes into play, because if I do negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, I'm actually going to have a plus. I'm actually going to have a positive answer, because these two would go to be positive. These two would go to be positive, and then I'd end up getting a positive times a positive in the middle. I end up with a positive answer. So it goes and kind of works its way around a little bit. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let me walk through, say, uh, A, C, and D, and then you guys can try a couple. And I'll have you pause it and try B, D, and F, and apply these, these rules, OK? So if we start on A, we have these two negative numbers. So it's a negative, and I'll remember one other way to write it, is to set a parentheses around both of them. And this is actually typically the preferred one when we work in an integer number system, because um, a dot could be misconstrued as another negative sign. So parentheses separating and showing they're two different pieces, that's really why parentheses became part of multiplication and the nomenclature for that. So we have four times two and two negatives, so my final answer is eight. If I have five times a negative two, Okay, I've got a positive 5 and a negative 2. I'm going to come over here and go, okay, that's 2 times 5. That's just my number is 10. And then I've got a negative, so I'm going to have a negative. I have different signs. Last one here, we've got 3.2 times 5 and 6, sorry, 3 and 2 tenths times 5 and 6 tenths. So we're just going to pretend and just do the math. I'm going to go ahead and do it the long way. 
So that becomes 12, carry the one, that means I get 11, drop my zero. Eight, carry the one, that's 16. Add them together, two, nine, seven, one. We've got two decimal places here. So now I've got my number, then we need to look at our signs. I've got a positive five and six tenths and a negative three and two tenths. So my final answer is negative 17 and 92 hundredths. Go ahead and pause the video and try B, D, and F. And when you're ready, hit play again and we'll check those answers. All right, now that you've had a chance to try those and the start of the video again, again, that six times eight is 48, then we have that one negative. So we have a different signs we're gonna subtract. This time we have our same signs, not subtract, we're gonna have a negative. We have the same signs, so it's gonna be being a positive 63. Here again, I've got those same neg two negatives, so I have the same sign. So it tells me I'm gonna go back to a positive answer, 32 over 15. Now I know I'm not done yet, because I have to simplify down to two and two fifteenths. Okay, now let's keep looking as we move to the next section. Now these are a little more challenging. We, we haven't really done this section, but this is gonna tie all the pieces together. So again, I'm gonna help you with A, C, and E, and kind of work that one out as we work down the problem. So let's take a look at those three numbers, and then I'm gonna have you try B, D, and F this time again. So let's plug in. So anytime I see a B, which says I'm gonna put in this two fifths. So negative five times two over five. So that gives us our rational, and we can even turn that into a fraction. So that's all that B tells me, that's the number that's gonna go in its place. So negative five times two is negative 10 over five. And then I can simplify that one further to negative two. Because again, negative two. Same here, A times B. A is here, B is here. So we're gonna say negative two times two over five minus three. So again, order of operations says we multiply first. I'm gonna use my parentheses. Negative two times two, multiply the negative times a positive, is four fifths. Four fifths minus three. Oh, gotta use my keep change up now. Change up. So I'm really gonna do three minus four fifths. So I'm gonna turn that into a common denominator again, right? So my three is gonna turn into 15 over five. And then I'm really gonna do subtract four fifths. I'm gonna get 11 over, fifth, over five, and that's gonna be negative because my greater absolute value is that negative. And I'm gonna simplify one more down to two and one fifth, and that again would be negative. All right, and our last one, this is the tricky one. So we're gonna talk about this B, this extra negative sitting here. Um, so we start with one half. I'm gonna just keep the parentheses instead of, of the dot. Uh, and now that right there is just gonna say that stays, the B is gonna be replaced by two fifths. So it's negative two over five minus negative two. So multiplication order of operations says we're gonna multiply these two first. So I'm gonna get negative two over 10. And I can simplify that back down to negative one fifth, but I'm gonna wait a minute and just do it all at the end. Then I'm gonna go, okay, so it's minus two times negative or minus one half. So keep change up here. So change opposite. So I've got really, I'm gonna create one more over these kind of fractions. Two in tenths is gonna turn into 20 tenths. And it's end up being subtract two tenths. So that's gonna bring me down to negative, so positive 18, because that's a negative two. 18 over 10, which is gonna get me down to one and four fifths. That's my final answer. And it's gonna be positive, because again, there's my greater absolute value. All right, now it's your turn to go ahead and try B, D, and F. Pause the video and see what you come up with. All right, so let's start with B. Negative four times A, which is negative two, times a negative 4.1. I'm gonna go ahead and go left to right, because that's how we do it if we have all multiplication. So negative times negative is gonna be a positive eight. Eight times negative four and one-tenth. I can kind of do this without having a whole separate part. So now I'm back to negative, because so I've got a positive and a negative. This is gonna end up being 32 and eight tenths, and because again, we have a single negative, different signs, there's my final answer is negative 32 and eight tenths. All right, B, we have negative two times B squared. Now we haven't done A squared, but I know you did this last year, so I'm gonna help you with this one. And hopefully if you had trouble on this one, we'll take a look at it. 
Board of Operations says we're going to square that first. So really what I'm going to do is here and here. It's going to be negative 2 times 4 over 25. And then we're going to multiply. Okay, now we've got that negative, so it's going to end up being negative 8 over 25. That's my final answer because I have different signs again. All right, last one. This one's the biggest. Negative 2 times negative 4 and 1 tenth plus negative 3 times negative 2. Close out my parentheses. So we're going to do each side separately, then we're going to add at the end. So 2 times ne negative 2 times negative 4, okay, same sign, so we're going to make it positive. And it's going to be 8 and 2 tenths plus negative 3 times negative 2, that's positive 6. So together we have following our addition rules now, same signs add is 14 and 2 tenths. Look the biggest, actually one of the easier ones because we didn't have to worry about common denominators or anything. All right, now you guys have had some time to work on some problems. Let's go ahead and we're going to have, I'm going to explain three and I'm going to have you guys try four and five. And then um, if there's time, we'll play the coot when I come back on Monday. Um, so let's walk you through how to do one of these. Okay. Um, Americans have two and a half million plastic bottles every hour. That's a lot. Um, every hour is our key right here and two and a half million is our number. Okay. So how do we work on this problem? This is again a rational number problem. Is it negative? No, it doesn't have to be negative to be working within the net rational number system. So we're going to think, okay, 2.5 million. And the upside is we can just write the word million here and help this make our work a little easier. And then it says in one day, if every hour is that, so we're going to multiply it by 24. So we have positive times positive. I probably should have written over here where there's more space to do the math. So I'm going to rewrite it. So 0, carry the 2, that's 10. 0, 0, carry the 1, that's 50. So we're going to add that together to help if I was better at lining up my numbers. So 6, 0, 0, and it's actually 60 million. And we would write that as 60 million bottles a day. That's a lot of bottles a day. And then it asked me how much in a week. So I'm going to use this information right here, 60 million. Now I could add all those extra zeros, but since I'm using the word, I don't have to use the, I don't have to put all those six extra zeros, times seven. So 420 million bottles a week. That's a lot of plastic bottles. Imagine how many of those, hopefully all of those are recycled. Um, let's hope. All right. Now I'm going to have you guys try both four and five, so you can pause the video now, and when you're ready, you can restart it. If you want, to, I'm going to give you a slight pause between questions four and five. So if you just want to do four and then start the video again, watch me do four, and then you can check and then pause the video again and do five. That's perfectly fine too. But we'll go ahead and get it started. All right, you're good to go. Go ahead and try number four, and pause the video. All right, so this is one of those fun problems to play with. All right, so in the United States, the length of the union, which is the stars, is two-fifths of the fly, which is the whole length. And the width is seven-thirteenths of the hoist. The hoist is the vertical. So how wide it is is, is seven-thirds of the total hoist. How wide this is, this is the width we're talking about here. So if the fly, that's this is six, how long is the union? So if we know, we gotta, there's a lot of extra numbers in here. So I want to know how long it is. So we're looking at the union, the length of the union. So if I know the length is two-fifths of the fly, it's going to be two-fifths times six, which then we're going to go, okay, it's 12 over five. And then we're going to come over here and go, okay, we multiplied. That really is two and two-fifths. And it says we said feet was our unit, so feet. They gave you extra information, didn't they? That was the goal to make you think, okay? Make you weed out what you really need to know. Okay, now try number five, see what you come up with. All right, this is our first instance where we institute see a negative. 
dropped is going to be a negative number. So when I'm going to multiply, I'm going to multiply that 500,000 shares times a negative 1 and 25 hundredths. So lots of zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Still, the, now we're going to have six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two times five is ten. And then this time our two drop zeros and our five more. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to say five. And we just drop all of our zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Five and zero is five. Two and zero is two. Six. And then we're going to move our two decimal places for our money. So the value of the stock for this company dropped $625,000 um, per share. That's a pretty good size drop for $1.25 per share. So that's, that's a pretty significant amount. So, all right, now you guys have had a chance to take a look at these. It's time for you guys to start working on your homework. All right, um, like I said, we'll play the Kahoot I've got saved for us another day when we get back, and we'll see how we do. All right. If you have questions, again, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to work with you in the morning before school.